Okay, um, you've spoken a lot about a special game and a very emotional presentation. What is that game? And what is that special? Yeah, I've been speaking about um, Fable 3. You know, it's the third outing of the Fable franchise. And we, I mean, I've, I just said to everybody in, in the audience, look, we want to make a very big, bold step. You know, for, you know, Lionhead's all about innovation. It's all about, you know, questioning the foundation stones of what you think of as, as being, you know, cast in stone. And we need to question some of those. We need to come up with a dramatic story that no one has ever played before. And we need to come up with game mechanics that no one's ever touched before. Because if we don't, then it'll just be another fable. And that's not what Lionhead does. It doesn't do... You know, it doesn't make small steps, it makes big steps. Yeah. Um, um, what does the player have to expect? What are the new techniques? How did you realize this drama? Well, the main thing that people have to expect is, you know, firstly, when you played Fable, you were a hero. You know, you were a hero out in the streets. Nice start. Which is a nice start, but this time, I want you to feel powerful. It's all about feeling power. You know, what would it be like? And that's not just a male thing. It's a female thing as well. You know, female gamers, you know, they could say, look, if I was in control, if I could control everything, I wouldn't have all this, you know, poverty and uh, suffering. And, you know, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to save Albion. I'm going to change it and make it more beautiful. You can do all those things if you are a king. You can't do it if you're just a hero. So half of this game is all about being a king or a queen. Where other games stop. No, you see, the crazy thing about this industry, so many times I've played so many games where I've just sat there and battled for 20 hours to be, you know, to win the crown or to be the hero, and then the game ends. Well, end, yeah. with Fable 2, what we, we're Fable, with Fable 3, what we're going to do, we're, for half the game, it's all about becoming a, a rebel and joining the land together and, you know, storming this tyrant and taking over power and then the game doesn't end no the game continues but changes pace completely because then it's all about being a ruler then it's all about finding out that rule and power isn't just as simple as saying I'm gonna feed you I'm gonna you know save everybody there's other problems involved and you know there's a saying that really inspires me and, and, and it applies to a lot of people in the world today. And that saying is, power corrupts. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. I find that fascinating. And being a, giving you a glimpse of that to the player is fascinating. I, that would have been my next question. Um, what does the power of a father that uh, decides about his family um, difference a king? And is... How, how did you realize that? Yeah, I, I think that's interesting, you see, because, you know, well, and it's interesting you should mention about, you know, how when you, when you are, have a family and the power that you have over the children and the family you've got, you know, how does that influence your kingdom? And your king, well, here's the interesting thing, you still have a family. You still have children and how you're going to, how much attention you're going to pay to them, how much, you know, how much of your sort of life is involved with them, how much is involved with the people that you knew, you knew in the past and your friends that got you to rule, I think that's another choice. And it, it all becomes very interesting because, you know, for me, I, you know, every day is, you know, and in my world life there is a choice about, you know, for, you know, family and there's a choice about, you know, lots of things in the world. How much... Um is the powerful person, maybe a queen, uh, connected to her fog, to her, to, 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 to her people? Yeah. Th this is interesting, how, what you're the connection to the people's like. Because this is one of the other fantastic, you know, sometimes you're so lucky when you develop to find a pot of gold, which is so valuable. And we found this pot of gold, and what we realized is we will let you choose how much time you spend with your people. You know, and if we let, if you, some people will lock themselves away in their huge castle and they'll very rarely visit the people anymore. 
Some people will disguise themselves and go out. This is what Queen Victoria did in England. She used to, every, once a year, she used to disguise herself and go out with the people. You, why wouldn't allow you to? Some people want to be, feel, you know, the, the appreciation of the crowd and, you know, to let, to, to have a royal procession and walk, you know, with heads held high. Some people want to lead with the front. All those choices we want to give you. So if I'm a very emotional queen, um, I can have as much contact as I want to. Can I touch the people? Is yeah, it visible? The, yes, you can absolutely. You can, you can touch the people. You can do some charming things. Like if you see, I really want this. These, I mean, I'm not telling you this is in the game, but this is the sort of inspiration that's in the game that's been inspired us. Imagine you're a queen. And imagine that you've decided that you're going to walk out into the slums of your, sit, your, your city called Bowerstone. What would it feel like to be able to grab the hands of an orphan and take them back to your castle? To show them, you know, all the wonderful splendor of your castle and maybe let them live there. Why shouldn't you be able to do that as a ruler? Because that, fa you know, that feeling of power just fascinates me. Power is... It's not only about, you know, saying we're going to go to war or I'm going to use this money for this. It's about how much of yourself you still give to the people that you've got. And the, keeping the people on your side, what history has shown again and again and again, is if you ignore the people, if you think they don't exist, you're going to have problems. Yeah. So I can make promises. I can decide, do I want them to be kept, yes. and um, how can, can I judge about the people? Mm. The other thing is that, <clears throat> one is that a lot of the time when you're not powerful, it's all about the promises that you make to get people to follow you. You know, and that's very interesting, and we've heard this from politicians and his, you know, historic figures again and again and again, and we as people just to believe them every time like robots. <laughs> And then they get into power and they just don't deliver on their promises. And, you know, people like Obama, you know, people created this massive shopping list of promises. Oh, he's going to do this and he's going to do that and he's going to save this and he's going to save that. Almost undeliverable. And if you notice, as soon as Obama got into power, he started saying, I'm not going to be able to do all these things. Yeah. And, again, this is, you are going to feel that in, in Fable 3. You're going to feel the your ability to promise things and then are you gonna are you gonna be able to live on those promises when you become the king the last thing is something called judgments one of the things about power is being able to judge things I think that this is right and this is wrong I am being able, at any time during those judgments being able to say right I've decided you know you are ruler after all like Caesar you can say Ah, oh, that's just, you know, that, uh, let's kill that person, let's save that person, let's, let's give them money, let's, let's make them innocent, let's make them, you know, someone powerful in my court. Being able to have the freedom to decide the fate of a single person or the fate of your entire nation is really important. So, um, I say that there is a lot of background at Fable 3, mm. and there are a lot of current affairs that you worked with mm. in your mind as the designer as you made Fable 3. Mm. Um, why? And, and uh, it, is it that reachable for the player? What do you mean by reachable? Um, can, can he imagine what, what kind of minds are standing behind Fable 3? I still don't quite understand yeah, the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, difficult to explain. Um, what I want to say is, is the, only, is the player only seeing Fable 3 as the game in, in the future? Or is he still connecting the current affairs with what he is doing as oh, the man with mean. power? You know, I think the interesting thing is that if when you play a game or read a book or watch a film, it speaks to you about the world today. I think that's a fantastic thing. And I, I'd love people to play Fable 3 and say, you know what, you know, maybe I appreciate politicians a bit more, or maybe I don't appreciate them anymore. And 
you know, why is this any, you know, even this is in the fantasy world and it's in a place called Albion, it's still a system which kind of exists and after, you know, the whole of our civilization is built upon what fable is talking about. It's built upon leaders and people with vision taking us as the people and the populace into places that we either want to go or don't want to go. And I want people in Fable 3 to feel that and to feel that sense of power and to feel that sense of relevance. That's a nice aim. So I mm. thank you for the interview. Thank and you. here we finish. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good Bye. Yeah. Well, I don't have any more.